Welcome back to Definitely Not Definitive. I'm Ken. And I'm Bethany. And we rank all our favorite nerd movies as a couple. And uh, that way you get the male perspective and the female perspective on each movie. And we're starting with all the Marvel movies in the MCU. We assign a score to each movie based on a score sheet that we developed together. Before we dive in, you might be asking yourself, why should I care what these two think? Well... You should care about what we think, because we care about what you think. And we made this score sheet available to you down in the description below this video right there. All right, so go ahead, download it, rank it, comment on our videos, and post your score. All right, because we need your help in properly ranking all these films. Now on to our review for Captain America, The Winter Soldier. So our first category is lead male and lead female likability. Now in the past, the lead females always revolved around a love story, the damsel in distress, lame. <laughs> but in this one, it's a little bit more interesting because our lead female is actually Black Widow. You're not doing a very good service to Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter was the lead in the first Captain America. So, so far, Captain America has done a very good job of putting a strong female presence as its lead character. And now, even though it was a love story between Captain America and Peggy Carter, she wasn't so shown as a damsel in distress. True. She was shown as a very strong female character. So with that being said, Lead male and lead female likability. I gave them both a score of four, which is the highest you can get in the likability category, and it means I want these two in my inner circle of friends. Well, you're gonna have to find me because I gave them both a four, so they're really gonna be if my inner circle group of friends, all right? And if you remember anything from Thor The Dark World, she likes her friends to be mopey and to be, you know, boring, so she wouldn't want Black Widow and Captain America in her circle of friends. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't fit. Come to my circle of friends, Black Widow and Captain America. You'll have a much better time. Lead male and lead female bangability. Captain America, you got a zero still for me. On the other hand, for me, Steve Rogers gets a five, which is the highest that anyone can get. That is, this could be more than a bang. And I think this might be the first time I'm giving out that ranking. No, it's not. Who was it before? You made such a big deal about how you gave it to oh, Iron, Iron Man, Man in Iron Man 3 That's and you right. thought it was going to be That's Steve right. Rogers first. I did think it was going to oh, be Steve Rogers first. Oh, how could you forget first. about Iron Man? You, Captain America goes in and she forgets all about Tony Stark. Oh, I don't remember. Who? I don't think I ever gave it on this high of score cap. I'm sorry. My bangability category is just growing every time. So, you know, it's hard to keep track of all the many boyfriends I'm acquiring. I'm very happy that it's the first time I legitimately am giving out a five. I'm giving out a five for the first time, Black Widow, all right? I'm not just saying that as, as a line. I wholeheartedly approve of that. I, I think that's great that you give her a five. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't approve of you Captain America, so it's not going to happen. Um, I gave Black Widow a score of three, um, which is I think she could teach me a trick or two in the bedroom. I approve of that one. I wholeheartedly approve of that. We I'm both approve of uh, playing Black Widow. That's great. You know, if you're a straight female who's going to be turned for someone... Black Widow's kind of that someone. My inexperience in the world with women would be okay with Black Widow because I think she would just her. take over. Yeah, you're in good hands with Black Widow. Yeah, yeah. Let's just let's just sit on that one for a moment. Let's just... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on to lead male and lead female relatability. For Steve Rogers, I gave him a score of zero. I just... He's too perfect. I gave him a three. I said it's the best parts of me, at least I think it is. Yeah, I mean, come on guys, he's freaking flawless. He doesn't have it all figured out. The scene with him and uh, Sam Wilson, the Falcon, where the, he asks Captain America, he's like, you know, you could do anything you want to do. He's like, so what do you want to do? And Captain America's like, I don't know. I think we've all had that. You know, there's someone that could do anything that they want to do and, and they don't really, they don't really know. They're not really sure about their place in life. And I think that's something that we can all relate to, where we've all had those moments of self-doubt where we're just like, you know, am I am I on the right path? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing? Because not even my fiancé believes in me that I could be anything like Captain America. <laughs> that's not true, baby. What I said was I said I think he's the exaggeration or the idealized version of us, of the American spirit. Of So when I look at him as a person, I see him as the ideal which is not the reality, it's not the reality, it's not, it's not what you relate to, but I think you're right. I mean, I think that spirit of him is what we do aspire to, and, and I think you do share a lot of qualities with him, the honesty, the loyalty, the integrity. You can keep going on this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, for Black Widow, I gave Black Widow a one. I said there's people out there like that, um, but I don't really, you know, I wouldn't call them friends. She gets a two. Um, I said it's not me, but it could be one of my friends or family. I think there is an element of her, this sort of like 
I will do what I have to do to get the job done no matter what. It did remind me of some family members I know who have, who have gone through some stuff and who then I look at them and I see they just have that rod of steel in their back, that determination that they will they will get the job done. Moving on to the villain. It seems from the title like the villain here should be a rather obvious pick, but it's not. And the Winter Soldier wasn't in it enough and he was kind of more of a pawn in this to be the ultimate villain. I wanted to put Hydra, the overall Hydra, as the villain in this one, but I was overruled. The real villain is Secretary Pierce. His end goal is basically to wipe out everyone in the world that isn't aligned with Hydra's goal and vision. Um, and, and very specifically, part of the objective of, of what they've been doing over the last several decades since they were defeated in 1940s Germany mm -hmm. is to create chaos so that they can utilize people's fear to make them relinquish their freedom yeah. and give over power to Hydra. And if they don't want to give over their freedom, well, then Hydra will just kill them. So who does that affect? Well, it affects a lot of people. It affects the world's health and happiness. That's a score of three. How strong is the villain compared to the hero? Now, if you were to put Secretary Pierce into a ring with Captain America, he's getting his butt kicked in like 15 seconds flat, no question. Secretary Pierce has Hydra at his disposal. He has the Winter Soldier at his disposal. For that reason, I gave him a three. I gave him a four. I said he is significantly stronger than our heroes. Do you care about the villain? I hate him. I hate him a lot. I gave him a two. He's annoying enough that I wouldn't mind seeing him dead. The fact that this type of villain really exists. This type of person is really in our world. Villain bang ability. Secretary Pierce that I'm giving a zero to, but I, I, just, I feel like I have to apologize to Robert Redford for this. So you get a zero in villain bang ability. I'm sorry. I also gave it a zero. I mean, don't get me wrong, Robert Redford's dreamy and all that, but you know, if you've got a bad personality, it kills it no matter how physically attractive you are, so. Visual effects. So I gave visual effects a score of four. I'm stealing a page from Bethany out here, okay? I gave visual effects a four. When I think of visual effects, I think, of course, of the CGI. There wasn't a ton of great CGI or anything. Obviously, like, bringing down these giant ships and, and the flying through the air, and the, there's no question that there was CGI in this. So I'd say, oh yeah, there's not like a lot of CGI in, in this film. And you're like, oh, there's a ton of CGI. The CGI is all over. And then she goes on and lists like 50 different CGI things. Yeah, well, thanks for that. I, I mean, it just goes to show you the CGI was so good in this that Ken really thought Sam Wilson was flying just through the, the air. He was flying through the air, and okay? airplanes were really dropping from the sky. I mean, not airplanes, like battleships in the air. I mean, so that just yeah. goes to show you. It was very realistic. It was very realistic, you know? I mean, they had to sign a lot of waivers in order to be able to shoot all that stuff. They did, baby. They did have to sign a lot of waivers. There's like no CGI in this. That was 100% real. Next up, we have side characters. That's why we brought Abby in for this one. So for side characters, you have Brock Rumlow, you have Agent Maria Hill, you have Agent 13, also known as Kate, the flirtatious next door neighbor of Steve Rogers, also known as Sharon, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. You have Bucky Barnes, the Winter Soldier. Falcon, Sam Wilson, and Nick Fury. We all agree that Rumlow, Agent 13, and uh, Maria Hill got a one. I said they're really just here for plot. Now, I also gave a one to Nick Fury. I disagree with that. I actually gave him a score of two. I liked Nick Fury the most in Captain America, The Winter Soldier. I thought, th th I think this is the best Nick Fury has ever been. It's seeing him for the first time ever in a really vulnerable state. Just because I liked him, it, it, we don't have like a, I don't know, a likability for side characters. So he really just was there for the plot. I didn't think he really helped the, the characters and he wasn't that really there for the humor either. For Black Widow in particular, seeing the impact that it has when Nick Fury is in pain when he is dying and he's in surgery. Um, she's not new to death. She's an assassin. She's a spy. She's seen this. She's been the angel of death for some people. Um, and yet, somebody like Nick Fury dying makes her vulnerable. We see an emotional side to her that's usually not shown. We both agreed that the Winter Soldier, Bucky, was there to make uh, Steve Rogers more likable and relatable. He's a bad guy. All right, he's a villain. But he makes Captain America more likable because, you know, he's got to fight his friend. And, you know, his friend is brainwashed. And so you feel bad for Captain America. For Falcon, I gave Falcon a two. For Sam Wilson, I gave him a score of three. I thought he brought a lot of humor to the movie. And not in a over-the-top, like, trying-too-hard kind of humor. But just in a really natural type of humor. And, and not just that, but, like, he also brings a lot of heart to the movie, too. I mean... 
his work with the soldiers, it's everything that he does, there's just this authenticity to it, a real naturalness to it that just makes it so believable. And I think it really fuels the film a lot. Moving on to Love Story. Um, now the love story here is between Captain America and Black Widow as a friendship, really. Their friendship yeah. is so good, their partnership. I mean, they really start as co-workers, but you see by the end of this movie, it's, it's developed in something very deep and meaningful and important to both of them. Yeah, and I want them to become friends, and so that's why I give it a three, is I can't wait for these two to hook up. I can't wait for these two to, to become friends and, you know, start this this great friendship that's going to you know last a lifetime and they're going to have each other's back and kick butt for the end of time. I gave it a score for the love-friendship bond that these two have. It will be devastating if it ever ends. Next up is dialogue. So we differed on this. Uh, we did. We did again. Um, I said it was one, it didn't take away from the film, I couldn't really quote it much. You said it was different. I gave it a four. I said I'll be quoting this movie for years to come. I don't think I gave it a four in dialogue, but I probably, I, just, I probably could bump it up to it too, that there were some quality one-liners in there. I think this was actually the movie that when we came out of the theaters having seen it, I turned to you and I said, from now on, you. we see all the Marvel movies in theaters. Oh, um, no. no, it wasn't my love. You're right, that's what it was. <laughs> for plot, I gave it a four. I thought there was so much going on in this movie that there's no way I was getting up to go to the bathroom. There was no way I, I was checking out of this film. The plot has so many elements and layers to it. You've got, there's like Steve Rogers versus the Winter Soldier. There's S.H.I.E.L.D. versus HYDRA. There's Secretary Pierce versus Nick Fury. I mean, the, there's so much conflict in this that it's very rich in terms of what you have to expect. So I, I also gave it a score of four. I would not get up to the bathroom or, or look down at your popcorn. You just, if, you, if you're looking away, you're going to miss something. Yep. Next up is female empowerment. So what role do women play in this movie? Yeah, Black Widow, as your lead character, you're going to get a high score in female empowerment, all right? For me, I gave female empowerment a score of four. I said the female is the true hero. It got a three. Without a strong move from a woman, victory would not have happened. Now, with that, I don't think that that means that Captain America is not also the true hero, but I don't think it has to be one or the other. And I think that's the beautiful part about this film is that they put a lead male and a lead female up there who don't have a love story, but who have a partnership on equal footing where they are both the heroes. One of the reasons we got so hooked on this was because of the action sequences. Now, the action sequences in this one got a 24 from both of us. Yeah. Uh, there's six action sequences in this. Both gave it a four. We were sad when they were ended. So six times four is 24, people. What really struck me was in addition to all of these different styles and, and choreography kinds, you also have the fact that most of this is business. It's mostly soldiers following orders from who, whichever side they're on. But when you get to the Bucky Barnes and the Steve Rogers fights, the fighting between those two it's so much worse. It's it's more vicious. It's mm. very definitely personal. And I think we all know that in the audience. We know the story. But when they have the fight choreography reflect the story in that manner, the sophistication of this movie and these action sequences is leagues above what we've seen before. The one downside, the one negative, if I was going to say about this, is... Whenever you have a character getting sprayed with machine gun bullets and like nothing hits him, like when Captain America's in the bus and they're just unloading a ton of bullets on this on this bus and just none hit him. Some of the best action stars are the ones that get all bloodied up, you know, like when like Bruce Willis in Die Hard. Yes. How many you know guys' foots all cut up and he's you know taking bumps and bruises left and right and you kind of want to see your your action hero you know all bloodied and bruised and beaten up at the end. You know, it seems like he's been through hell and back. I kind of want to see that. So she wants more of that. She wants to hurt his heroes. Okay. I don't know why I want to hurt Captain America so much. I don't know why I want to make him less pretty and less perfect. What could that reason be? I don't know, because don't I want to bang Black Widow, so I don't know what you got going on. <laughs> soundtrack. I give Soundtrack a one. And I give it a two, which I said that it gets me... Uh, motivated and pumped up. I mean, I really feel like they they utilize the music not in the same way that we've seen in some of their other movies where it's, it's catchy and it's something you might sing to or you've heard on the radio, but in this it really was designed to just fuel the emotional impact they wanted the scene to have. Humor. So it got a 24 on humor, but I wouldn't consider this one of Marvel's funnier films. It got a score of 23, uh, which is not the highest, but it's a respectable score. 
Last but not least, we have the heart. I gave the heart a two. For heart, I gave it a four, which is it warms the heart and waters the eyes. Now, this... she does not cry. She, I, did, I did not see a single tear in her eye when we were watching it. Even though I didn't cry this time, I was still moved. Did your eyes get misty or did they water at all? That's all I want to know. That's a three or a four. If they didn't, then you know, the highest you score you can give is a two. I'm giving it a four. Yuck. My final score for Captain America was a 103, but it got two fist bumps. So it bumped it up to a 105. I gave it four fist bumps, so my score is 115. So go ahead and download our scoring sheet. It's down below in the description of this video. And let us know what your score for Captain America The Winter Soldier was. Our score was 110. But that is definitely not definitive.